But first, of course, the big story today. We start with the latest data out on the labor front as the December jobs report showed continuing higher uh, to wrap up the year. As we saw, uh, the unemployment rate, as I said, dropped to 3.9 percent, the lowest since February 2019. Overall, the numbers came in softer than estimated a little bit on the headline number, though there was some seasonal adjustments there, perhaps to blame for that. 199,000 jobs versus the 450,000 expected and a revised uh, 249,000 jobs added in November. Average hourly earnings, also important to highlight there, month over month, rising 0.6% versus the 0.4% expected and a revised 0.4% in November. Of course, we've been watching uh, not just the Fed, but also economists seeing wages rise and inflation concerns continue to persist here in 2022. Uh, For more on all of that, though, the numbers we got, want to kick things off in the noon hour with our first guest here, William Rogers, Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis Institute for Economic Equity Vice President and Director. Uh, Bill, good to see you again here. Happy New Year to you. I mean, when we dig into the numbers, obviously, there's a lot to discuss uh, beyond it, you know, if we're talking equity here, interesting to see the unemployment rate for black Americans actually not improve, actually got worse uh, by more than half a percent. Talk to me about what you saw in the report and where you think the Fed's at. Yeah, um, I think it's, uh, it was a good report, especially if you put a little more weight on the household uh, survey, which is which is where the unemployment rate uh, estimate comes from. You know, that ticking down seems to tick down because uh, people were getting jobs, people were coming into the labor force and 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 being successful with getting a job, uh, and that that's that's very important. Uh, the other thing too that uh, I think also you have to put some uh, put a positive uh, sort of view on this report is that there were upward adjustments in previous months uh, that uh, would get you I think around 140,000. And additional jobs. So, uh, you know, all in all, the, the 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 quantity side of the of the report in terms of jobs uh, uh, continues to stro- show uh, an economy that's recovering. Yes, we still have a ways to go compared to where we were at the be- prior to the, be- the beginning of the expand of the uh, the pandemic. Um, but 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 overall, it's positive. Uh, the wage growth numbers uh, are a concern. Uh, particularly, they're you know they're si- they're sizable, but they're also less than what the cost of living uh, is doing in terms of the consumer price index, uh, so that's that's a concern. But you know, some people have said, "Well, why are we seeing this disconnect?" And uh, you know, the, the two surveys, the household survey and the payroll survey, are different. Uh, BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, does have a, an adjusted series where they uh, basically remove uh, what we might call additional workers, or they or they or they connect the employment concepts across the surveys. And when they do that, you get a you get an adjusted household survey uh, that, that that looks more like the the, uh, the payroll numbers but all in all it was uh, you know it's a good report uh, you know we do have some headwinds going forward obviously omicron because that that started to tick up after this job after the uh, survey was being done Bill, we heard from the president a short time ago um, talk about uh, his approach to improving the economy, saying, you know, this is a fundamentally different approach. This is about lifting all boats, if you will. Um, women, you know, the, the, that has been a big weak spot. And we've talked about this a lot, but we saw labor, uh, the labor force participation rate among women reach the highest levels we've seen during the pandemic. Um, to what extent can we see further improvements without the additional legislation the president's highlighted um, that allow for child care and the, the additional help that, that uh, this pandemic has shown that a lot of households are seeking? Yeah, I think if you're if you wanted to move forward without additional uh, relief and recovery, but also reimagination, some of the ideas that are being talked about represent a real reimagination, a real reset of uh, of priorities, a really a reset on how we can make American workers uh, productive. So, uh, I, my sense is, uh, from my analysis, uh, from our st- staff's analysis, and for our focus on equity, um, the the kinds of things that the president is talking about. I can't get into the specifics, but the kinds of things he's talking about are needed um, because they will help to enhance productivity, uh, not of just women, but also other workers or in the family. Uh, And and productivity growth is one of the key ingredients of economic growth. Now, if, if... if those uh, ideas don't come to fruition uh, in the near term, uh, the way we could get back to higher participation rates will, would have to be really, again, putting our, putting our uh, you know, 
hands down really addressing and, and ending the, uh, the public health crisis that has emerged uh, out of COVID, um, because that is really, as we're seeing now with Omicron um, uh, sort of surging, it's having an impact on those very folks you just mentioned about uh, women and parents. And even I've, we're, we've even found that seem to have had, had an impact on older women, that some of those folks who have retired, claiming they're retired are women between 65 and 74 years of age who um, have left uh, the labor force possibly to help out with providing uh, child care to their adult children's kids. Yeah, and Bill, the other thing, too, I mean, when we're talking about this kind of a lagging, this big surge in Omicron, obviously a different picture for the economy on the other side of this jobs report, the place we're living in right now. Uh, and you did see leisure and hospitality jobs come down a bit from what we saw back in October, that big surge of 200,000, more than 200,000 jobs back then, just 53,000 in this latest report. And I assume some of those might actually be shown to come down in the next jobs report we get because of Omicron. So, I mean, when you think about how all of that ties back to maybe some of this recovery being felt differently for, for whites, blacks, Hispanics in the country, as we saw a lot of those minorities hit in the leisure and hospitality sector. I mean, what do you make of, I guess, how some of Americans are still faring better than the rest of the country here and how long that's going to persist? Yeah, that what you've described has been called a case, a K uh, style or K shaped recovery. Um, in some earlier work that I've done uh, when I was back at the College of Women Mary, doing work there in those community in that community, uh, we called it the two realities economy. And and what we're experiencing in those two realities or these K type K K shaped types of recoveries is is basically what I attribute, we've had this, this sort of decade, several decades, where we've slowed down our investments in what the United Nations calls human priorities. And human priority investments are investments in education and training, the human capital, we call it, uh, but also, most importantly, social capital. And that's investing in whether it be social safety nets, uh, social security, health, unemployment insurance, but it's also it's investing at the local level, investing in communities, uh, com community centers, investing in uh, infrastructure, uh, the scaffolding that may can help uh, local communities thrive. Um, because what we've seen, seen is right that uh, Tip O'Neill, former House Speaker, used to call it all politics is local. Well, I like to think mm -hmm. and say all economics is local. And if we can do those kinds of investments, uh, we can actually, uh, as the President said, um, it sounded like it was a new talking point, but a new metaphor about uh, you know the folks who bake the pie can also have eat, eat the slices of pie that they're baking. And 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 that and it uh, comes through investments in uh, in families and communities that grow productivity, which is one of the key ingredients of economic growth. Bill, we continue to hear uh, from employers about their challenges in trying to fill some of those job openings, and yet 3.9 percent unemployment rate. We're talking about near uh, near full employment. What does that suggest in terms of the wage pressures that employers? are likely to see even further as they try to, to get additional employees through the door with the competition that's out there. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not a forecaster, but uh, but you know, it, it, it has right in the last part of the of the previous year, um, those uh, have 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 generated some pre upward pressures. However, you know, in the long scan, long scan, uh, this is a fairly, still a fairly recent in a period where we've seen uh, nom nominal increases in wages, sustained nominal increases in wages, and uh, but not only just wages, but also compensation. Right, firms are having to, or employers are having to think about other ways of attracting and retaining uh, retaining employees. And you know, the the, the forecast of where the, where, uh, where the economy is going. Going to be going into this coming year could suggest that the unemployment rate will still continue to trend down, uh, but it's going to trend, but it'll trend down, and the impact of push upward pressure on wages will depend upon getting this uh, pandemic uh, addressed to where those who left the labor force will find that the wage offers are net offers are now a above what economists call the reservation wage, right? That people have higher reservation wages either because they're getting support or they have higher reservation wages because the stock market has been doing really well. Uh, they have higher reservation wages because they may be an older, older uh, grandmother who had been working, but now one needs to help out with the child care in their community. Uh, and mm -hmm. so 
getting, getting address, finally addressing this, the, the, the pandemic, as I've said, but also uh, continuing to grow the economy to provide opportunities that those wages will exceed people's reservation wages and that'll draw people back in and moderate some of those, 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 wa those inflationary pressures from the wage side, that is from the wage side. Mm -hmm. Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis Institute for Economic uh, Equity Vice President and Director Bill Rogers there. Appreciate the time, sir. Uh, Happy New Year as well.